What's going on everyone? Today we have nine kitchen hacks that will help you in the kitchen either make food faster, make food taste better, or make food look better. So let's get going. If you've ever tried to cut down tomatoes, you can have the sharpest knife, but inevitably this will happen and you'll end up with tomato slices that don't look so great. It's even worse if you're trying to make nice little cubes for guacamole or a pico de gallo. So instead, use your bread knife. It'll make really nice slices, um, and it's even better when you're cutting things down into nice cubes. Number two, instead of using a knife to smash the garlic and, and cut things up, put your garlic in a jar, shake the jar for 90 seconds, two minutes, it really depends on how hard you shake. Check it, if it's not, if the peels haven't fallen off, just keep going, but after a few minutes, you'll have something that looks like this, and if the peels haven't completely come off, like one or two of these, they'll simply just peel right off, and you have a delicious garlic clove. Hack number three is to save your scraps. When you're peeling vegetables, like carrots or potatoes or vegetable ends, like an onion or asparagus, don't throw them out. Get a freezer bag and fill up the bag with all of your scraps. It doesn't have to be completely full, but just pull, push out the air, seal the bag, label it of course, and throw it in your freezer. Once the bag's full, roast those vegetables for 20 minutes or so, and then simmer them and you'll have a stock going. Number four, warm your plates. You spent a long time creating a delicious meal. Serving it on a cold plate will make sure it shows up to the table cold. So set your oven to the lowest setting, put your plate in the oven for five minutes, 10 minutes, you should still be able to touch it, so just get it to the, the level that you want, and then plate up your food. You'll see here, it's still steaming, and you'll have something that's really good. It's a hack that restaurants use all the time, and you can do at home. Number five, label everything. Have you ever picked out something out of your fridge, not known if it was still good or what it was at all? I use this painter's tape and a Sharpie. Just cut off a little piece, label both what it is, the date you made it, and attach it right to the front of the jar. This way, when you put it in the fridge, you'll know exactly what it is and what day you made it, so there'll be no more guessing if it's good or if it's not. Speaking of salad dressings, whenever I make a salad dressing, I always have a problem that the bowl moves around a lot. This is easy when I have a spare hand, but when I don't and I'm a drizzling oil, the bowl can move everywhere. This can be really unsafe if you're um, using something hot. So just put a kitchen towel underneath and it'll make your life not only easier, but a lot safer. Number seven, freeze your stocks or your sauces. I have some extra chicken stock here um, that's gonna go bad soon. I like just putting it in this ice cube tray, fill up as many slots as you have, throw it in the freezer, after overnight or so, sometimes a little bit longer, depending on the stock, you'll have these cubes of stock. For me, this is about 100 milliliters. I just throw these in a freezer bag, and whenever I need to add stock to a sauce or even make a soup, I just throw these right in the pan. Number eight, pit olives e easily. If you want to just pit olives by hand, you end up with a mess. It takes a long time, but you can use the end of a knife. Just push down very, very gently. The pit will come out immediately, and you have pitted olives that you can use in a pasta. Speaking of pasta, if we use those olives and tomatoes, uh, you can make a puttanesca pasta really, really quickly. You could serve that by just throwing it on a plate. It'll still taste good, but we can up our game a little bit. Use a carving knife and a ladle and spin your pasta and you'll make those pasta nests that fancy Michelin star restaurants serve their food in. Just put that on a plate, clean up the side of the plate, drizzle with a bit of olive oil, of course a little Parmesan cheese, and you've got a fantastic meal that not only tastes good, but looks really good. So thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next episode.